This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Adobe Firefly is a big deal. It's Adobe's new text-to-image AI generator. But unlike many of the others out there, it is trained on data sourced from their own stock library collection that they have permission to use. Hello, my name is Brad, and I am splitting this video into two parts. The first part is all about how Adobe Firefly works. I'm gonna be walking you through the beta and comparing and contrasting this to some of the other options out there, specifically Midjourney. Then we're gonna take a few prompts, and we're gonna try them both in Firefly and in Midjourney to see what we get. And the second part of this video is about how I think this is a good direction for our industry and how I really like the path Adobe is heading down here. So with that said, let's get to the demo. So Adobe Firefly has several options here. The very first one is text to image, which is something you're probably super familiar with if you've used any of the other AI art generators or photo generators out there. The second one here is about text effects. What they're doing is they're taking text fonts from their library combining it with photorealistic images and creating some really interesting things. That's really cool because that's something a lot of AI image generators don't do well is rendering text. And this being Adobe, they're working on a whole bunch of other AI related things. Adobe has been sprinkling AI into their products over the last several years. There was the AI selection tool in Photoshop, something that I use a lot is Premiere, the video editing program, has this really great transcription tool that works amazingly well. So with that said, let's jump in and let's do some text to image creation. And when I get to this page, it shows me a lot of the stuff that other people have done, some of the things that this app has created. At the very bottom, it's actually a little bit easy to miss if you're not looking for it. There's a little text box where you can enter your prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've already prepped a couple prompts here, some things that I've been playing with, trying out. I'm going to say cool puppy dog wearing a sweatshirt. Let's go ahead and just hit generate. It does take a couple seconds, but eventually your images pop in. They look pretty good. So one of the things Adobe has done here is they've streamlined the interface quite a bit. Uh, obviously we have our four images here. I can click on any of them. It just brings up a larger version of that image. I'm able to toggle through those images. And over here on the right, I can change things like my aspect ratio, my content type. So if I want a graphic or a photo or art, I can define that here. And then underneath that, there are styles. I think this is really cool. This is something where if you're using other text image generators, you have to kind of understand what the name of a style is before you can use it because you're typing all of that in. And then down below, we have the opportunity to change some of the colors and tones. I can choose warmer tone, vibrant tone, that sort of thing, change the lighting a little bit, the composition. Some of these are interesting. Right now, by default, it seemed to go to art. If I just click over to photo, it's gonna re-render these images in a photographic style for me. So there we go. What I think is interesting about this is Clearly, it's kind of <laughs> kind of like a photo. You can see that some of the textures look more realistic, but these do not look like photos to me. Not a bad thing. They, they look more like illustrations with realistic textures applied to them, but looks pretty good. So with that done, let's take the same prompt. Let's move it over to Mid Journey and see what we get. Now here, I'm just using the prompt. I haven't told it what style, whether I want it to be an illustration or a photo or anything like that. I'm just letting Mid Journey figure out what it's going to give me. Okay, so it is done. Let's open this up in a browser. So immediately <laughs> you can see this did not understand my prompt, which is a little weird because the same exact prompt worked earlier. But generally without a lot of prompting, uh, it, <laughs> it put these on sweatshirts, that's ridiculous. This guy is wearing a sweatshirt on the sweatshirt, but just with a simple prompt, I think you get solid stuff. So Adobe Firefly, Mid Journey, you know, kind of, kind of in a similar realm here. So I'm gonna clear my styles, enter in my next prompt, which is small corner store from the 1950s, 3D model, blender, and cute. I basically am looking for a specific style. I'm not giving it too much direction here, but I wanna see what it's gonna produce. So this is one area where I think we are gonna see a big difference between Firefly and Mid Journey. Overall, the renderings here, I think look, look pretty solid. It looks like a 3D render from Blender, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more of a 3D model of the shop. So I entered it in over here in Discord and I have my results. Let me open that up in the browser. And this is exactly the sort of thing I was looking for. Just a nice, not quite isometric view of a little corner shop and what it may have looked like in the 1950s. So let me go to Firefly and say outside of small corner shop from the 1950s and say no people and let's see what it gives me. Okay, so this is much closer. This is similar to what I was going for. I don't know why there's people in it because I said no people. Maybe, maybe I need a comma in there. 
comma no people. There we go, the comma did it. So one of the things that becomes really apparent when you're looking at architecture or things that really need smooth, crisp lines is that we do get some weird morphing. For example, I don't know what's going on with the awning up here. Um, this line isn't perfectly straight, it kind of bends down. When you look at the door, you see some weird warping and things like that. And that's something I've noticed a lot more in Adobe Firefly that you may have seen in older models of Mid Journey that you're seeing less and less now that we've gotten to like version five. I'm gonna give Mid Journey more directions here. I'm gonna upgrade it to version five because I didn't use V5 when I was doing this prompt initially. I'm also gonna add soft light, white background, kind of that cinematic effect. Let's see what this gives me. Well, that's rendering. Let's go back to Firefly and do the same thing. Cinematic, soft light, white background generate. Here we go. I feel like we're really getting closer here. So it seems like the more information that you're able to give Firefly, the better and better stuff you're gonna get. This is getting really, really close to kind of what I was thinking about, these nice little storefront models. Um, I'm digging what Firefly gave me now that I've given it more information here. And back to Discord, uh, Mid Journey, what you got for me? Kind of something similar. Um, also, another thing that I've noticed as I've rendered these is there's like modified version of Coke logos everywhere uh, in the um, in the mid journey models here, which I think is kind of interesting. But generally, I feel like these models that I'm getting from mid journey are just crisper, nicer. You can tell that mid journey is a couple generations ahead. Let's do people next. I want to see a close up of a middle aged man pondering his career choices in a coffee shop, not inspired by real life. While we're waiting for Firefly to do that, I'm going to do the same thing. And again, there's no prompts here. I'm just seeing what it produces. So you'd never know that Firefly was trained on stock photography, right? I will hand it to them. These these are very photorealistic. I would never guess that this was like not a real photo. All of these middle-aged men look like they're contemplating things, although they look they look happier than I expected. Okay, Mid Journey, what do you have for me? Okay, so this is this is really good. I did not tell it whether I wanted an illustration or whether I wanted anything photorealistic. Generally, this captures the mood of the coffee shop and the lighting that was in my head without me telling it what kind of lighting I wanted. And in general, look at these hands. Those are some good looking hands there. These gentlemen, all they look a little bit samey, but they all look like they're contemplating. You know, if we go back over to Adobe, these guys don't look like they're thinking about much. They just look like they're smiling off into the distance. Okay, I have one more prompt. Pirates looking for treasure deep within a cave lit by torches. Digital painting, fantasy art, dynamic, concept art. I'm gonna hit generate, but before I do, I do wanna shout out to today's sponsor who made this video possible, Squarespace. You already know Squarespace can build you a great website, but they can also give you all the tools you need to take your business to the next level. Start by checking out all the insights available in their analytics, where your site visits are coming from, where sales are coming from, analyze which channels are most effective, improve your website, and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Squarespace also provides SEO tools. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a whole suite of integrated features and useful guides that will help you maximize prominence among search results. And of course, you can stand out in any inbox with Squarespace's email campaigns. Select email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like your colors and your logo. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, back at it. Let's go ahead and hit generate, see what we get. Okay, we have four comps. Let's see what we got. Ooh, okay. Okay, so let's talk about good and bad here. Good compositionally, I feel like these aren't bad. They're good starts. If you're creating concept art, I like the colors. I like kind of how they're framing things here. But obviously, as we zoom into the people, um, this is an area that it, the, the mid journey is just gonna stomp this. Okay, mid journey, let's see what you have for me here. Let's open this in the browser. Okay, so what's interesting here is layout wise, when we're just talking about like what it's doing here, a lot of these are really samey. First of all, the colors are almost identical to what we saw over in Firefly, right? You've got the orange up front. You've got the cave framed in a certain way. You've kind of got this blue faded background. But when you get to the actual rendering of the concept art, the stuff that we see here is way, way, way cleaner. You could go in with more prompts and, and keep working with it. But for the most part, you have something here you could work with. This unfortunately is something you probably wouldn't want to show to a client. What's interesting here is I think Adobe Firefly does 
does certain things extraordinarily well. If you have one subject, you're combining two things, it seems to work really well, especially if you're doing close-ups of them. When you start to get into scenes, when you start to get into scenery, when you start to build more complicated things, it starts to fall apart and get really rough around the edges. At least at this point, this is beta, this is version one, this is two weeks old. We will see what Adobe's gonna be doing with us over the next few months and years. But overall, I'd say this is a really good start. Obviously, the other part is the data it's being trained with. That is the biggest thing and the main thing that I think is a huge step forward for our industry. A lot of this reminds me of the early days of Napster and LimeWire when people were really pirating music. And for several years there, it looked like the music industry was in bad shape. But out of that, you got Apple Music, the iTunes Music Store. You eventually got streaming services like Spotify. Spotify. And this is a double-edged sword for creators. You know, if you look at something like Spotify, it doesn't pay nearly as well to an artist as selling a CD did back in the day, but it's better than having your music stolen. And I know at this point, there's probably a lot of people in the comments who have already written, boo, Adobe, this sucks, no one's gonna use it, mid Journey's gonna win. I totally disagree. In my time as a graphic designer, I worked with brands directly, I worked with ad agencies, marketing agencies, and across the board, they are very, very risk averse. And they wanna stay as far away from any copyright concerns as humanly possible. This tweet from Chris Castanova, I think summarizes this all very, very well. I was approached by several brands from London who were interested to add generative AI to their workflow. All asked if Adobe Firefly could be used after I showed several available options. What most of them cared about most was if the model was commercially safe trained on data sets that didn't contain copyright material. I had to explain that Firefly was still in beta and the images aren't for commercial use yet. I was surprised that it wasn't the quality of the images they cared about most, but the way that the model was trained. When I asked about the quality of images, several brands said they weren't seeking photorealism because that type of work they already had with photography. So Firefly, as it is now, would be good enough for them to use if it was possible to use it commercially. Yep, 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 this is not surprising in the least. If you're a marketing manager in charge of a brand, the last thing you need is legal trouble. So I do have some thoughts, some questions in here in general. For example, I, I'm a little concerned at how fast Adobe can move on a lot of this. For example, Mid Journey 4, which was a big step forward, came out in November. Mid Journey 5, just came out a few weeks ago in March. And version five is a big step up from version four. Adobe tends to release something and then in November they drop a big update to it. And I feel like I've made a similar video before for Photoshop and Illustrator on the iPad where I'm excited about where it's starting, but then a year, two years, three years later, it's kind of in the same place just with a handful of features added. On the other hand, AI is so hot right now that I've got to think that Adobe is pushing hard to put as many resources behind this to move this as quickly as possible. And the elephant in the room is, can these models get really, really good without just grabbing billions of images off the internet? Can Adobe do this with a much smaller data set? Would they be able to take their data set and merge it with something like what Dolly is using, which is copyright free images, form a larger data set, improve it that way. Where is Adobe going to get more images to improve on their model? Or are there other ways to improve on their model without using more data? The other question I have is how is Adobe compensating creators? For example, if you are part of the Adobe stock program as a creator, you've submitted photos. If someone purchased that image, that photo from you, from Adobe, you get like, I think it's around 30, 35% of the profit from that, which is cool, except Almost everybody I know who uses Adobe Stock has a subscription to Adobe Stock. I'm not quite as clear as how that works. Is it by images downloaded? It's probably a lot less than someone buying the image outright. And this goes back to that Spotify question. How would you compensate creators if their images are being used to create images that aren't directly theirs. Is there any compensation for them being trained on? I don't I don't know, I don't think so at this point, but it does create the opportunity to compensate creators. It also creates the opportunity for creators to populate their work into these models as a way to possibly license them out in the future through Adobe. I don't know if Adobe's interested in doing that sort of thing, but I think there's a lot of creators who would like to do that sort of thing. Even if it's not Adobe who succeeds in this sort of thing, I think we're starting to see a path forward of how AI image generators can be built in an ethical way, and that alone is a pretty exciting thing for me. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.